What's up, everybody? It's Prion Joni. So as we're dealing with this pandemic, the last two weeks has been really interesting for a lot of entertainers. A lot of these folks whose jobs have been affected by this global situation and have had to stay home have turned to live streaming. The past two weeks, there's been an explosion of people live streaming their craft. Now, the quality of the live streams can vary between super professional looking with great use of camera, lighting, and a nice at-home makeshift set, while others are clearly just the selfie cam used on their mobile device. The audio of these live streams can also vary between the music playing out of the speakers and being picked up on the mobile device's microphone, or you hear direct audio from the DJ gear or the music gear that they're playing on. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys a beginner's guide of a few relatively inexpensive items that will help optimize your live stream broadcast. And basically, I just wanna show you guys how to make the most out of using your phone or iPad and still get decent video quality and get the best audio quality. So first, for you guys who are just talking on your live stream, maybe you're cooking, maybe you're welding, or doing some carpentry, or you're simply just making a vlog. For most people, talking to your phone, as is, works out. But there is a way to optimize the quality of your voice when you're talking. And that is to actually use a lavalier mic, a microphone that mounts right on your clothes and is basically close to your mouth so that you get direct audio signal from where you're talking. Just like how I'm getting better quality because I have a microphone going to my camera right now, there are microphones similar to this one but is made for the phone. I can't actually use the one that I'm using on my phone. There's a special type of plug and wiring in the ones that work with the phone. But having a good microphone improves the audio of your voice and makes your video a lot more engaging. It makes it more pleasant to watch and easier to hear. A lot of the lavalier microphones that are made for mobile devices come with adapters as well and all these accessories. Say you don't have the headset jack on your phone because you have a newer phone. I have an old, super old phone, uh, iPhone 6S. Some of these microphones come with the lightning adapter or the USB-C adapter for you Android users. So if your live stream involves talking, use a microphone. One little tip. When you're live streaming with the selfie cam, now I don't know if this is the case with every single platform, but whenever you're live streaming with the selfie cam, people are also seeing a mirrored image of you. So if you have a t-shirt with text on it, it's gonna read backwards. The way around that is to actually use the front camera, either have somebody hold it for you or mount it in a way where you will always be in frame of that camera. You can even use a separate mobile device like an iPad to actually read some of the incoming comments that are in your live chat. Now, what if you're a DJ or a musician and you have your setup and you're just tired of live streaming and having the speakers play into the microphone of your smartphone and you want the audience to hear directly what is playing as opposed to what's being picked up in the microphone of your smartphone. And the one I have here is called the iRig. It's right here. Really simple too, and uh, pretty small. It has two RCA inputs. It has a microphone and headphone jack right there. Now, before I say anything else, there was a mistake that I made when I purchased this. You see, when this plugs to your phone, the phone actually powers the device. So when you're live streaming with this and your smartphone, you're actually draining battery and you might not get a lot of live stream time because your phone might die. If you get this device, make sure to buy the power supply. The reason is because when you use the power supply on it, it will also charge your phone when it's connected to your phone. I know for a fact it charges my iPhone. Android users, please let me know down in the comments. Now, before I found this power supply that works with my iRig, I actually bought the dual splitter lightning dongle that splits your charging port and your headphone jack. Using this will not work with the iRig. That's because power doesn't run through the second port to power the iRig. And some people might think, hey, I'm gonna use the DC power supply 
on the iRig and then still connect it to the second headphone port, it's going to give you an accessory error message on your iOS device. I have no idea what it'll do on an Android device, but the solution is actually simpler. All you need is to plug the DC power supply on the iRig. Now what's cool is in the box it comes with three cables. The one I'm using with my iPhone or my iPad is this proprietary cable on one side and it's lightning on the other. What's also cool about the iRig is that it has two other cables. One of them is for USB and the other is for USB type C. So what that means is you can use the iRig as an interface for your computer as well. I'll talk about how I do that in an intermediate live streaming video, but for this video, we're just gonna keep it simple to using your mobile device. So for you DJs who have a semi-professional or professional setup, and what I mean is, say you have a four-channel DJ controller or a two-channel DJ controller or a professional DJ mixer, what I'm specifically talking about is you have more than one output. You might have a master output, that's XLR or TRS quarter inch, and you have a booth output that's TRS quarter inch. Or your device has both, but you also have an RCA master output. Essentially, you have an advantage because you could just use one of those outputs to go directly to the iRig, and then use the other output to go to your speakers. Now, what if you're like me who uses an entry level, <clears throat> I mean, a portable <laughs> DJ controller, and it's one of the ones that only have one RCA output. What can you do? Well, the solution is, is you have to split the output because you're gonna need at least one pair going to the speakers and the other pair going into the iRig. Phil Morris from Digital DJ Tips did a really great video for beginners how to live stream and his solution for splitting the output on an entry level controller was to actually get two RCA Y adapters, you would essentially end up with two pairs of stereo outputs coming from your controller by having those two adapters. Now there's actually a solution that's a little bit more flexible, but gives you the same results with more control. And that's to get one of these. This is a Rolls Stereo Mini Mixer. I've talked about this in a video before. This is a passive mixer. It has four pairs of RCA inputs and one pair of an RCA output. You can combine up to four stereo devices and have them mixed with volume control out of one RCA output. Now what's awesome about this, because it is passive, you can use it backwards. And what I'm talking about is you can take the output of your DJ controller and plug it into the labeled output of the mini mixer. And then that one signal gets split up into four separate signals that you can allocate to wherever you want, up to four. And what's even cooler is you get volume control independently for each one. In that past video where I was talking about this mixer, this was actually a simple solution if you wanted to have a booth monitor output for your entry level controller. <clears throat> I mean, your portable controller. And it'll be separate with separate volume control from the one going to the master speakers. The other two you could use for whatever else, maybe a portable recorder. But in the case of this live stream, what can we use this for? So let's say this black and white RCA cable represents what's coming out of your entry level controller. And we're gonna plug that into what's labeled the output. I'm gonna put black on the white RCA, the red one on red. Now you have a signal that's going in to this mixer and it's being expanded to four other channels. So say channel one, what you normally plug in for your speakers, obviously it's gonna be RCA at the end that's connected to your controllers. So let's say you plug your speakers onto channel one. Now next, I'm gonna use another channel to plug the iRig. Now I could plug the iRig to channel two, but these knobs are pretty close to each other. So I'm just gonna put it to channel three. And then we're gonna take the other end of that RCA and go directly to the iRig and plug that right there. 
So now, using this, you have a way of splitting the audio to go to your speakers and to also go to your iRig. When I was doing my live stream from my coffee table, this is actually how I had it set up. I had the mini mixer set up right there and I was splitting the audio between the DM40s and the iRig. Just make sure that the channels you're using, the volumes are at max. Because this is a passive mixer and we're using it backwards, we wouldn't be able to use it backwards if it was an active mixer, but it doesn't do any amplification and it doesn't get any louder than it would have been if you plugged it directly to the iRig and your speakers. And then when you get to your iRig, you just connect it to your phone, set up your live stream. Preferably, I would recommend using the front camera instead of the selfie cam. Play a song, make sure that the signal is hitting the OK LED, which is an indicator saying that your levels are at a good amount where it's not too loud or not too quiet. Because if you hit the high, you run the risk of clipping and we don't want that to happen. Set your camera where you want it to be and you can start DJing. And just another side tip, if you're using the front camera, that means you won't be able to see the live chat. And if you don't have a separate mobile device like an iPad to keep up with the live chat, you can open up a browser, open up your live stream on the browser, and you can go back and forth between your DJ software and looking at the live chat. That's what I actually do in my live streams here in the studio. Now, if you're a musician and you have a setup at home with a little mixer, with your microphone and your guitar, whether it's acoustic guitar with a microphone, or you might have a guitar rig with amplifiers and cabinets, you can basically plug your mixer into your iRig as well. If your mixer has quarter inch outputs, you can get the same wire I showed you earlier, quarter inch on one end and RCA on the other. And this is a pair, you can buy them as one pair. And you basically plug the RCA end into the iRig. I'm not gonna go into too much detail into how to set it up as far as your levels and your audio goes. But if you're a musician and you have your own mixer, I would assume that you already know how to do that. Just make sure that you're hitting the center LED where it says okay, and it's not at low or high. So what else can you do to optimize the quality of your live stream. You have your mobile device set up with the camera the way you want it. You got the iRig you're using for audio. What can you do to make it better? In this video right now, I am using a ring light. In fact, in all my videos, I use this ring light. So let me show you guys my ring light. It's always in all my videos right there. Sometimes you see it from the reflection of my glasses, especially when I'm really close to the front. See? <laughs> Let me show you what it looks like when I turn off the ring light. Now you might say, hey, it's a professional camera. You can adjust the exposure and it can bring you out. That's true. I'm not a fan of that look. I kind of want my background and my subject, which is me, to look kind of even. So I use a light. So how much of a difference can good lighting affect when you're using a mobile device's camera. Let's try it out with and without the ring light. So this is my selfie cam with the ring light. This is my selfie cam without the ring light. This is my front camera with the ring light. This is my front camera without the ring light. Huge difference, right? And the reason for that is when you're live streaming using your phone, the camera is basically on automatic exposure. When you're in a semi-dark environment, it forces the camera to automatically increase the exposure and lower the shutter speed. When that happens, you get more grain and you get more motion blur. When you have a nice good lighting source, it lowers the exposure and it also brings up the shutter speed. So you won't get as much grain and you won't get as much motion blur. Every videographer and photographer will always tell you the biggest secret to making photos and videos look their best. Lighting is the key even when you're using the camera on your smartphone. In fact, if you check out my live stream that I've been doing here in the studio, you know what my camera actually is that I'm using for the live stream? It's my MacBook Air. It's not really the best camera in the world. I mean, it's, it's a laptop webcam. This MacBook Air, which is actually a 2017 model, actually has a better camera than my 2013 MacBook Pro Retina. That's why I'm using the Air. 
And since right now I don't have an HDMI capture device, I'm just using my MacBook Air. But the reason why the quality looks decent, considering it's a webcam, there is some motion blur, is because it's really well lit and it's just lit up using this one LED ring light. And the other reason why I really like this ring light is because it doesn't give a harsh shadow. It's, you know, semi soft, where my face doesn't have these super, super sharp shadows from my nose and the contour. And you don't necessarily have to have the ring light. As long as you have decently bright lighting coming from an angle from the front, and it's not coming from behind you, you might be able to get away without really needing a lighting source. But I highly recommend it because you can dim this to match the background. Let's say you have a super, super dim lighting in the back. And if you use the ring light, it might make everything just dark. You can adjust the dim setting so that it matches your environment. The other thing to consider is if you are using something like a lamp, it might not be bright enough for what you're trying to achieve. And you'll know that because you'll have more motion blur. So quick overview of everything we discussed today. If your live stream is just you talking, like if you're preparing food, doing carpentry, welding, or whatever it is you do, maybe landscaping, get a lavalier microphone that's designed to be used with a mobile device. If you're gonna be performing music and you don't wanna use your phone's built-in microphone and you want your audience to hear the direct audio from your gear, get an iRig stream and don't forget to get the DC power supply so that your phone will be charging while you're using the iRig. If you're using an entry-level DJ controller that has one pair of RCA outputs and you need to split them up, get the Rolls Stereo Mini Mixer. You're gonna use it in reverse and you'll have up to four pairs of stereo outputs with volume control. And lastly, make sure you have good lighting. So your video doesn't look like this or like this, but more like this. And one last little tip, whether you're using your phone or your tablet, and whether you're using the selfie camera or the front camera, please wipe the lens on it. I've seen one too many live streams where the video quality looks like a J.J. Abrams film, where it's lens flares everywhere. <laughs> Anyways, if you got any comments, questions, or anything to recommend a beginner using their mobile device when they live stream, please leave it in the comments section below. Would love to hear your thoughts, answer any questions, or learn anything new that I haven't covered here today. If you like this video, please smash that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button and don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. And one of those videos is going to be when I do a walkthrough of my intermediate setup over here. I'll be talking a little about OBS and using your PA mixer with a built-in interface that plugs USB directly to your computer and optimizing your audio by using things like compressors and limiters within the software. Anyways, thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Take care.